the pleasures of heaven are with me, and the pains of hell are with me. The first I graft and increase upon myself, the latter I translate into a new tongue. These beloved words by Walt Whitman describe the extraordinary life of Dr. Helen N. Fagan. Helen Fagan, overcoming great personal tragedy, has triumphed, spending a lifetime dedicated to teaching the lessons of the Holocaust. Born in Radomsko, Poland in 1918, Helen grew up in the darkness of the Holocaust, yet emerged as a shining light in the fight against anti-Semitism and hatred in all its many forms. Growing up, Helen lived with her family in an apartment above the small town department store owned and operated by her father. She was in her second year at the University of Krakow when the war began on September 2nd, 1939. One day after the German invasion of Poland, Helen's life was shattered by a German bomb that demolished her home. After the bombing, all they could find in the rubble was a twisted piano string, a burnt silver spoon, and a charred piece of wall covering. At the age of 21, Helen and her family were rounded up with all of the Jews in Radomsko and forced into a ghetto. Tragically, her parents were taken to the extermination camp at Treblinka, where, along with so many others, they perished. The day after her parents were taken, Helen received a small package in which she found her father's silver cigarette case and her mother's golden locket. Inside was a note that read, Sorry, children, that this is happening to us. Please, try to stay together. We love you very much, your mommy and daddy, she says. These were our parents' last words to us. In the ghetto, Helen ran a secret school for Jewish children. She said, can you imagine a world without access to reading, to learning, to books? With great courage and empathy, Helen would read smuggled books, such as Gone with the Wind, would help the suffering children soften their pain by providing them with a journey into another world. One day, she received word from the underground that the ghetto was going to be liquidated. She said, the Nazis were coming for the rest of us. Knowing full well there was no chance for me to survive, I decided for better or worse, I'm running. She ran into a building and hid in the attic, evading the Nazis who were searching for Jews. She says, the Nazis did not find me, and I came out of the attic after eight days. A young man from the underground came back and took me to Warsaw. I had to make a new identity for myself. I had to live under false papers. Helen was finally reunited with her sisters after a time, and they were liberated by the Russian army. Eventually, after the war, Helen and her sisters made their way to a displaced persons camp for survivors in Austria. From there, in 1946, they made their way to America, to New York. Two years later, in 1948, Helen married Sidney Fagan, and together they moved to Miami. Sidney became a building contractor who, upon retirement, earned fame as a sculptor. The two were married for 68 years and had two children, Judith and Gary. Since her university studies were interrupted by the war, Helen pursued her education when her children were older. She earned her bachelor's and master's degrees in English from the University of Miami and finally her doctorate while teaching full time. She, like so many others, did not speak about the Holocaust. And then there was an auspicious encounter that would forever change her life's purpose. She met Ellie Wiesel, Holocaust survivor, author, and educator. Helen asked him if he, like her, had Holocaust nightmares. She said, he looked straight into my eyes and said, if you and I who are survivors don't speak about it and teach it, then other people will approach it using their own imaginations. I knew at that moment this was my calling. The journey of her calling began. Initially, the idea of being involved in Holocaust education was too painful for her, but eventually she developed a curriculum for a course on Holocaust literature, one of the earliest of its kind in the nation. 
More than encouraging students to simply analyze and critique writers' works, Helen concentrated on teaching a moral lesson. She said, I became strongly convinced that the Holocaust could serve as a constructive lesson in teaching personal morality to young men and women. It is here that she began to teach the idea that humanity needed a deep moral compass. The fact that she herself was a survivor made these lessons of the moral compass more poignant and impactful. In 1979, Helen was invited to serve as an education advisor to Elie Wiesel and later was appointed chair of the United States Holocaust Council's Education Committee. The committee was in charge of developing an educational track for the future of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. The museum opened in 1993. Speaking that day was President Bill Clinton, Elie Wiesel, and Israel's President Chaim Herzog. Later, President Clinton asked Helen to serve on the advisory board for the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. Helen has continued for the rest of her life to have a profound influence on Holocaust education through the collaborative creation of many institutions, memorials, and educational programming. In addition to receiving a multitude of awards, at the age of 103, Helen was awarded both the key to the city of Sarasota and the prestigious Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatees Zachor Eisenhower Award for bearing witness to the Holocaust. It was her daughter, Judith, who created a Legacy of Light Endowment Fund for the Holocaust Education at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in her mother's name. Helen wrote, We, the surviving victims of the Holocaust, bequeath to you our legacy, born of suffering, pain, and dehumanization, and the loss of our loved ones, in hopes that from the depth of this darkness, a new light will emerge in your world, a light of hope, of peace, of tolerance, and of understanding. This gives meaning to my survival. Helen's story is one of survival, resilience, strength, and determination to stand up against the anti-Semitism that had destroyed everything she held dear. And so we say to you, Dearest Helen, child of the Holocaust, profound soul, great educator, yours is a life well lived. And as you stood up for so many, we now stand up for you in our actions, our words, our deeds, and our moral compass that will carry your legacy far, far into the future. Helen, we love you and we thank you.